Welcome everyone, and we want to offer a special congratulations to the recent graduates of WGU. I'm Steve Solberg, and I'm your host and comedian for the night, and I am proud to be hosting the first ever WGU virtual alumni celebration tonight. Whether you're a recent graduate, a current student, or a seasoned alum, or a family member of a WG Night Owl, we are thrilled to have you here tonight with us. We have an exciting commencement planned for tomorrow and can't wait to kick off the weekend with this fun event right here tonight. Throughout the night, we'll be hearing from various WGU alumni partners and we'll be giving away tons of WGU swag, goodies, playing some on-stage games, having a crazy goofy time. But my cue card says, Steve, please, they have no idea who you are, introduce yourself. So yeah, I'm Steve Solberg, I'm a stand-up comedian, and uh, I realize that I have a weird face, that it looks like an awkward mix between Kevin Bacon and Mark Wahlberg, and I know that there's some of you at home looking at me going, nah, all I see is David Spade. I don't know what to do about it, and I have no uh, choice in the matter. It was the face I was given. You could change it, but I don't have that kind of money. Uh, I did have a stranger come up to me one time and go, hey man, no offense which I was like, oh, what compliment is this no offense stranger gonna give me? And he goes, no offense, but you look like Mark Wahlberg. And I was like, well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that very much. And he goes, like if he never worked out. And I was like, all right, uh, thanks, man. Uh, keep walking, jerk. But uh, regardless whether or not I've worked out or not, I mean, whatever. We're coming out of quarantine. Maybe you're more fit, maybe you're less fit. Who cares? I don't know. We're here tonight to party and celebrate with you fantastic night owls. So, like I said, we're gonna be giving away tons of swag tonight, so stay tuned. The first prize that I have to give away, not a small one, it's gonna be a $100 gift card to the WGU store. I have another one of those that I'm gonna be giving away at the end of the show as well, but we'll be giving away this $100 gift card right now to the person who says in the comments down below, who do you think I look the most like? Is it uh, Kevin Bacon? Is it Mark Wahlberg? Is it David Spade? You choose, and we're gonna randomly pick a winner from those comments down below. If you're selected as the winner, uh, of course, well, maybe I'll, I'll give you a second. I'll give you a second to comment, and, uh, and uh, because it takes a couple minutes. It takes about 30 seconds or so. Uh, as a comedian, uh, it's expected that I'll be able to do uh, lots of goofy things, like impressions. Uh, I don't really do impressions. I've worked on them a little bit. Like this is my, I got Ray Romano. Hey, that's all I have so far. I haven't really worked that hard on it. It's just, my brother's tall. Maybe you guys know that one. Uh, I was doing one a while back that was from uh, Adam Sandler's movies. You guys know Adam Sandler. I've been told that WGU and Night Owls are my same age, so they'll let me know in my ear when we get a winner. But, oh, I, I got one. Oh, Robert Janeway is our winner. Robert Janeway, she voted David Spade. Or he voted David Spade. I heard Janeway and I thought she, but Robert, you're probably a dude. Regardless, Robert, you won. So what we want you to do, Robert, is email alumni at wgu.edu with your mailing address and we will get that prize sent to your home. Congratulations, Robert. Now, let's check out this video put together by a team at WGU that is all about helping students succeed. It's the WGU scholarship team. Don't go anywhere because after this video, we will be giving away a WGU basket. So stay tuned for a chance to win. There's their basket right there. Reply in the chat with the program you graduated from and we will select a winner.
And congratulations to Amanda Rodriguez from the Interdisciplinary Studies. Congratulations, Amanda. Email alumni at wgu.edu with your mailing address, and we will get that prize mailed to you. Congratulations, Amanda. Well, as we are doing this virtual celebration, I just want to ask you guys, how's it been? How's your pandemic, right? Uh, this is my first pandemic. I don't know if any of you have been through any others. Maybe we got some time travelers at WGU. Uh, it's a little different than I thought. When they said pandemic, I gotta admit, it's not a word that I was used to hearing. My brain, when they said, uh, well, we're going into a pandemic, my brain just heard apocalypse. That's the end. It's the pandemic apocalypse. And I gotta admit that I've watched enough zombie movies that I know how to deal with the apocalypse. Like, I'm pretty good at it. Like, I went straight out, I bought myself a black leather vest, and I put spikes on the front of my car, and I was like, let's rock this. Like, I thought that that's what a pandemic uh, apocalypse looked like. And I was ready to trade weird things for like food. I was like, here's some Kirby Puckett baseball cards. And you're like, oh, here's some food. And you're like, ah, this is the end of the world. Thanks heavens I saved those cards from 1986. But it turns out that is not what the end of the world looks like at all. Uh, yeah, pandemics don't look like that. You, you don't have random fires everywhere, just random fires. That's what pandemic apocalypse movies always have. You're like, anybody gonna put that out? Nah, it's just in the background. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. Glad it's in my house. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's the end of the world. You got other things. Oh, okay. Just leave that. That's not the end of the world. The end of the world instead looks like you sitting on your couch watching Netflix. Uh, it's just you and the Tiger King, just hanging out, just enjoying that. Did any of you watch that? I have to admit that uh, that's how bored we were when everybody was like, watch this, it's good. No, it's not good. It was awful. It was just about this guy in a mullet who happens to have tigers, which I admit, that's pretty awesome. Uh, and uh, shooting rocket launchers at mattresses and then feeding tigers Walmart meat. And you were like, that guy's awesome. I freaking love that guy. And then the other lady in the video, Carol Baskin. I don't know why we hated her, but we did. They made you hate her. You were like, I hate her. And they were like, why? And you're like, I don't know, she talks funny. <laughs> you had no other reason. I mean, maybe she was a murderer, but who knows? She just mostly talked funny. That was the only reason I didn't like her. But whatever, that's what we did. That's how we lived. That's how we survived. Now, maybe some of you where you live are starting to uh, get out of quarantine a little bit. Uh, it's been fun. That's been a learning uh, process. When you say, okay, maybe we're gonna start going out to eat, maybe a little bit, uh, it's very, very, uh, I'm, I'm timid to do it because there's a couple of things that used to be acceptable in public that are no longer acceptable. Like if you have to cough in 2020, no, just, you're, you're not gonna cough in public. I went out to Chili's, I don't mean to brag, but I did it, I'm at that level now. Obviously comedy money is coming in, going to Chili's for the chips, which then promptly got caught right in my throat. At that point, I was faced with a choice. I could either cough a Chili's chip out in 2020, cough in public, which is impossible. You're not gonna cough in public in 2020. I, you might as well just die. I had the chip just going And then they were like, are you gonna cough? <laughs> no, I'd rather not. I'd rather not cough right now. It just feels too embarrassing. I'm a person who sneezes. I don't know why, but I sneeze when I go outside and there's the bright sun. I don't know what that is, but it's something, it's like photo something. One of you WGU graduates knows what that's called, photo sneezativity. I don't know, I have it. I walk outside, the sun hits me, and I, achoo! You're never gonna hear tight. you're never gonna hear bless you, you're just gonna feel the stares of a thousand people going, why did you go outside? And you go, I don't know, I'm sorry, that's all I said. It's allergies, that's what you say, it's allergies. Might be, might not. Probably one of my favorite parts of the pandemic has been grocery store shopping. Because now, uh, there's rules on the floor. The arrows that guide you where to go. Just, uh, and nobody follows these arrows. I don't know if you guys are arrow followers. God bless you if you do. I hope you follow the arrows. But it's, sometimes it's so tempting. You'll have an arrow pointing at you and you're like, but I just want the peanut butter that's right there. 
It's right there, I could touch it, I could touch it. And they're like, sir, if you want that peanut butter that's right there, just go on down that aisle all the way down to the end by the milk and then come on back. Just make a half mile loop and then come on back. And you can do it and you're like, okay, 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 okay. You walk all the way around the store, which is a great advertisement for the whole store, by the way. Well done, clever, clever move, grocery stores. Uh, every once in a while though, you'll have a standoff, right? Maybe you're following the arrow and then somebody at the other end. They approach the aisle, and there they are. It's just like this Western standoff, just you and them, just wee wee woo, and you face up, you square up, and you're like, there ain't six feet enough for the both of us in this aisle. And I thought about, what do you do? And I realized it's the exact same thing as the Old West. It's whoever's quickest on the draw. You got to quick on the draw, and if you're the quickest, you're going to go, <coughs> and then you get the aisle. If you could do, <coughs> and then you're going to be like, ah, no thank you, no thank you. You're going to have the aisle. You're going to have the aisle. So then you get to get the aisle. So hopefully uh, you're quick on the draw. Hopefully you're staying safe because, uh, yeah, you guys, the world is your oyster. It's all ahead of you, WGU graduates. Uh, we have some other awesome stuff to give away. I have a fantastic backpack from the WGU Refer a Friend team. Click the referral link in the chat down below and you will be eligible for some fun WGU swag, that backpack, and uh, comment with who you would refer to WGU, and we will pick one of you lucky graduates to win this backpack, as well as the water bottle right next to it. There you go, fantastic. Once well, you've video. experienced the benefits of WGU's affordable, personalized approach to getting your degree online, it's natural to want to tell everyone you meet. Now, there's an easier way to let friends and family know about WGU. Refer a Friend is a platform that makes it easy to tell friends and family about the benefits of WGU and earn rewards. Sign up just once to get a personalized link that you can share with as many people as you want on blogs, emails, forums, and your favorite social media platforms. You can track how many people have checked out WGU from your link and earn cool WGU gear in the process. More referrals, more rewards, more convenient. Sign up today to refer a friend and help us change people's lives through education. Welcome back. Did you comment in the chat with your friend that you're going to refer to WGU? Maybe you were referred to WGU yourself. I feel like I've been referred to WGU after this. And uh, some of you are like, yeah, you should totally do it because I want to see you here. Oh, and our winner has just been announced to me, Sarah Elizabeth's for, uh, did you say Sarah Elizabeth's husband? Her husband, oh, is the referral, uh, your husband and your coworker, Sarah Elizabeth, congratulations. Email alumni at wgu.edu with your mailing address, and we will send that right to your house just as lickety split as Amazon Prime. Now, we have a contest that we're going to do on yon table behind me. Uh, it's going to be involving your mascot, Sage, as well as the WGU alumni relations team who brought this event to you. We're going to ask them to play two Minute to Win It games. Uh, please, welcome to the stage, Sage, as well as Natalie. Here comes Sage the Owl, looking good, dancing. I'm loving it, loving it. Now, the first game they're going to be playing is the classic water bottle flip. You guys are familiar with it. Oh, man, that would have been rad if I would have nailed it, but... That's Sage and Natalie's challenge. Whoever can flip it the most time in one minute will win. Now you're gonna choose, uh, which one do you think is gonna win? In the comment section, comment. Is it Sage, is it Natalie? The winner of uh, this uh, will win some WGU socks. We're gonna randomly pick the winner who picks because there's only two of you guys. There they are right there on the screen. Oh, as well as a notebook, fantastic. Okay, so we'll put one minute on the clock. And when our music starts is when you guys will start flipping. Here we go, you're going. They're already getting competitive, pushing each other. Here we go, we are at two, two flips. None landed so far. Natalie in our workout section was uh, practicing this and nailed it five times. She already is in one. Sage, it's tougher because uh, let's be honest, he's got those primer feathers. Those are long, those are tough to do, but don't worry, Sage, your focus is beyond 
compare. I mean, he's an owl. Natalie, are you still at one or do, do we're at two? Right there, right there. That was three, that was three. Sage, don't worry, but you gotta catch up a lot right now. You got 20 seconds left. Sage, bring it home, my buddy. Come on, there we go. We're going strong with three water bottle flips. Maybe you guys at home are challenging this. Sage is looking frustrated. And we are counting down in just five, four, three with the buzzer, two and one. And oh my gosh, Natalie got the buzzer beater right there. Did you come out with four or five? Oh, six. Oh yeah, just six. She's a professional water bottle flipper. And Sage, of course, came through with as many as he did. Did you get any, Sage? <laughs> well, let's be honest. It's, you'd be probably the first owl to get it. So, uh, I mean, so far that was pretty awesome. Uh, but uh, yeah. Now our winner, Rachel Faramandafar. Rachel, I hope I said your last name right, uh, because that is an awesomely long last name, Rachel Faramandafar. It sounds awesome and I like that name. And, uh, but if, if I got it wrong, excuse me. Anyways, Rachel, email alumni at wgu.edu with your mailing address, and we will send that prize right to your uh, home. We have one more game. So again, in the comments section, in the chat, vote for who you think will win this next contest. We're gonna welcome team one and team two. We were very original in our names. We have team one, also team two. <laughs> So, team one and team two, we are gonna welcome back to our stage. Oh yes, I forgot, let me explain what they're gonna be doing. This game is called, uh, did we name this game? I believe it's called uh, Shower Cap Cheese Head. Seems like a good name to me. What it is, they're gonna have a shower cap on their head. We're putting shaving cream on said shower cap and the team who is able to lob the most cheese balls onto the shower cap shaving cream head wins the prize. So again, we're voting between team one and team two, not to overcomplicate it, I suppose. So uh, let's get a shot of us shaving cream. This is Jeff's head here. You guys know Jeff, you've seen him in all of our Facebook Live videos. And Natalie is, yeah, it needs plenty of shaving cream. The more the merrier there. There's no amount that is too much, really. That looks good. He says this isn't humiliating at all. It looks, it looks good, I like it. And the cheese balls are my favorite because I mean, it's delicious ammo, made popular by The Office. If you saw the episode where uh, Michael's team was throwing cheese balls at each other. I'm gonna do a, a touch more. Let's go a little touch more just cause you know, you need it. We wanna make sure you get a good amount on there. Oh, oh, running out of juice. There we go, there we go. Did you, are you getting that sound by the way? That's a beautiful sound. a little Yeah, oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so again, one minute on the clock and we'll start when the music plays again. Is that right? Grab a good handful. And here we go, here we go, we're going, we're going. We're live here, one cheese ball, two cheese balls. They're looking good, they're looking good, they're looking strong. Oh, and team two, which is uh, Bo and April here in the back are taking a commanding lead right here already. Many cheese balls, I think I can see seven or eight cheese balls. This is insane, they are well out ahead. Natalie and Jeff are feeling the pressure and this is tight. Oh my gosh, they are. Okay, Natalie's making a move here, we're catching up with Many more cheese balls. Let's do, we got 20 seconds to go. Bonus, 10 bonus points if you can get it in his mouth. Get it in his mouth, Natalie. Let's see that. Let's see it in the mouth. Ah, uh, come on, there we go. Oh, oh, team two just got it in the mouth. They are nailing this. Team two just scored two in the mouth. Did team one get any in the mouth? Three, two, one, buzz. What? I'm gonna count that because it was beautiful. We had a buzzer beater right there at the end. But uh, let's see here. We got how many cheese balls up here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 cheese balls. All right. And over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and a half. <laughs> 13. I'll call it 13 cheese balls. 18 versus 13. But you, Bo caught how many in the mouth? I count at least three. 
Well, caught three in the mouth. I, thought I saw three as well. And Jeff, you had one in the mouth. So congratulations, team two, April and Bo. You guys rocked it on the cheese ball game. Well done. I'm very, very impressed. And uh, anybody at home who wants any cheese balls, feel free, open wide, because uh, we'll, we'll just, just right here. It's just right, just, if I can get it to the camera guy. Bradley Har, you won. Bradley Har, congratulations, Bradley. Email your mailing address to wgu.edu, Bradley, and we will mail, what was the prize for this one? A, a canister of cheese balls? I forget what the prize was. It wasn't a canister of cheese balls. I believe this was the WGU socks and et cetera. As the socks and notebook, that's right. That's socks and notebook. Though, Bradley, if you need cheese balls, just, just let us know. We're, we're, that kind of, we're that kind of university. So anyways, uh, now, we have another congratulatory video for you graduates. And you know what that means. Reply with the name of your employer and watch until the end to see if you win this fantastic phone wallet from our career and professional development team. New WGU graduates, congratulations. My name is Michael Kimball Bryant and I work in career and professional development at WGU. We are so excited for all you have done and will continue to do as alumni. Congrats on your hard work and perseverance in earning your degree. Please know we are here as a resource for you throughout the entirety of your time as an alumni. That's right, as an alumnus, you have access to our resources, advisors, and careers platform, WGU Handshake, free for life. That's not a benefit a lot of alumni get from their universities. So whether you are a career starter, career changer, or career advancer, we are here to partner with you as you navigate those career transitions. Please go ahead and check out our website at wgu.edu forward slash career dash services to view our career resources, book an appointment with an advisor, or find out how to log into WGU Handshake. Congrats again on all of your hard work, determination, and perseverance. They will be great qualities for you as you endure life's adventures. All right, our winner from working at the Rock of Central Florida, Tegan DeLong. Congratulations, Tegan. As you know the drill by now, email alumni at wgu.edu with your mailing address and we'll get that prize mailed out to you. Now, let's hear from the WGU advancement team to watch inspiring graduates and what they have done to help other WGU students. We will be selecting five winners uh, to receive this notebook uh, here in the image. So tell us in the comments your favorite thing about WGU and we will select five submissions to win. WGU Advancement is the fundraising arm at WGU. We are a separate 501c3 um, and the reason that we're set up that way is so that we can fundraise for all aspects of all things WGU. We want to make sure that foundations out there in the world who are really interested in access and innovation in higher education have opportunities to um, meet with and partner with us to make change in the world because at WGU we are providing access to education and innovation in education that isn't happening anywhere else. Most people, most foundations, most institutions are not giving to WGU necessarily, they're giving through us to change the world in the ways that they're passionate about. And so we have an opportunity to really focus our efforts on the ways that WGU is making access to education available to so many people in our society. Some of the stuff that I'm the most excited to talk about is the work that happened right up front to bring philanthropy cords to our graduates. And what that is is an opportunity for people who are about to walk a graduation to wear a cord signifying that they have given back to WGU when they're graduating. That is unheard of in higher education. And what that means is that our graduates really deeply care and honor the education that they receive. Being an alum is important to me. Anywhere where I you know, can, can help others, I certainly am willing to do it. 
I wanted to donate to the WGU Scholarship Fund because I was helped during getting my degree and I wanted to help another student during their process of getting their degree. I would encourage WGU grads to donate to help other students so they can reach their goals just like we did. I love that, almost $100,000 given from uh, WGU alumni to each other. You guys are so fantastically generous. And our winners of those, they're gonna give them to me one at a time because uh, of course they told me to share with you uh, your favorite thing about WGU. So our first one, Dan Williams. Dan Williams said, I love the cost of WGU. So Dan Williams, our first winner. Julie Sutherland says that the WGU student mentors are awesome. Thanks, Julie. And James Weaver, who said he loved the course instructors. This is like when you watch the news and they're like, that awkward pause in between when they're whispering in their ear. Anna Watson, who said, being able to complete the degree with uh, working out my schedule with the three kids. Well done, Anna. That's not an easy challenge. And Gina Enloe appreciates the flexibility for when she can do her class time. I love that, yeah. There's a reason that you guys are called Night Owls. So to our winners, be sure to email alumni at wgu.edu with your mailing address to get those prizes mailed out to you. What a great university, you guys. You should be proud of it. I have learned a lot about WGU, and I'm impressed with the flexibility, as some of you mentioned, the affordability, as was mentioned, as well as the competency-based uh, competency education, all this stuff, so applicable and so usable, and everybody's so doggone friendly. I've had a great time getting to know this group specifically to put on tonight's event. Another great thing that I have learned about WGU is that it is the most military-friendly uh, school, one of the most military-friendly schools you can find, and tomorrow, WGU will recognize military members, and we want to take a moment tonight to say a special thank you to those graduates. Reply in the comments below with the branch of military you or your family members are a part of. I love seeing your guys' faces and names and reading you, and thank you so much for your service. And I want right now to see some high five emojis, 
some uh, thumbs ups because I want to know who's excited for commencement tomorrow. From this very stage where I'm standing, we'll recognize more than 1,000 graduates. Obviously, uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, it threw a wrench into things for our live ceremonies. But WGU is awesome to create an engaging virtual commencement. A special thanks to Liz, Scott, Wendy, and Kristen. They've done an amazing job to bring this all together, and I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. There will be two amazing graduate speakers tomorrow, and here they are to introduce themselves. You'll also be hearing more about their stories tomorrow, but additionally, one of our regional vice presidents would also like to tell you how proud she is of your hard work. Hey fellow graduates, I am so excited for tomorrow's virtual commencement, and I'm also honored to be one of your graduate speakers and to share my story about tragedy and triumph. I am so proud to be part of the Night Owl Nation. See you tomorrow. Hello 2020 WGU graduates. My name is Armando Martinez, and I'm excited to celebrate with you tomorrow at the virtual commencement ceremony. I'm honored to be a night owl and to share my story about perseverance and resilience with you all. So tune in. Good evening, night owls. My name is Tanya Drake, and I'm the regional vice president for the Northwest and chancellor for WGU Washington. Take a moment and remember that first day that you joined us as a night owl at WGU. Wow, what a journey it's become. And now you're ready to celebrate. Just think, you will be part of the most memorable graduating class ever, the graduating class of 2020. You certainly deserved all the bragging rights and now it's time to celebrate. Congratulations on behalf of all of us in the Northwest. We're proud of you. 2020 WGU summer graduates, congratulations. You did it. You committed to your goal, you embraced the process, you persevered, and now you have achieved. Some say this is where the hard work begins. Whoever believes that must not know that night owl ambition never rests. Congratulations again, and know that our relationship doesn't end today. As an alum, we are here for you now and always. Go night owls. We had a bonus speaker there. Uh, our, we had two regional vice presidents, Tanya and Richard. Thank you for your kind words. And uh, Eileen and Armando, we are excited to celebrate with you guys tomorrow. It's such an interesting thing to me because WGU, you guys have had a leg up on the learning world that is now so drastically changed. It's so many of you are parents. Uh, some of you are gonna be going back to going into jobs. Some of you might be homeschooling some of your children right now as the pandemic rolls on. Uh, some people are very nervous about this. I, I would be. I mean, uh, there's some of me that's very excited about it because I had friends who were homeschooled growing up and uh, I'm excited to hear about what they've learned in schools. I have no doubt that the students uh, who are the WGU parents, like your students, your little kids' students, they're gonna be great, they're gonna be doing awesome. My friend who grew up in homeschool, I always got to hear about the random facts that he learned at homeschool. He was like, well, when the Redcoats landed on the moon, uh, we all know that that was a fake moon landing. And he'd be like, what are you talking about? I have no idea. And he'd be like, well, reading's fake news, but uh, you know, people don't really do that. And you'd be like, I'm so worried about you. So I'm glad that we have WGU students who are probably gonna be doing a great job homeschooling their kids as it comes into uh, more of the fall and you start teaching your kids at home. I think it's been interesting to do so many different things virtually, doing all the Zoom shows and whatnot. Just this Hollywood Squares scenario. These are how most of my comedy shoes, shows go now, where we're just doing Zoom shows. We're up in this corner, they're having a great time. This corner, they're in the kitchen. You're like, what's going on? This is ridiculous. And you don't get to hear the laughs because it's like, it's Zoom. They have to be muted. You just have little hands going, great job. And you go, I hope, I don't know. It's kind of a weird world. Uh, some of the Zoom shows, I gotta admit, I've really enjoyed them from the fact that it shows how tiny our world is. I did a Zoom show the other day where I got to do comedy that was in Abu Dhabi, Sweden, and Italy, all at the same time. 
there was a, a family from London, and they stayed on after the show, and we got to chat. And they had their little kids on there, and their little kids with their cute little London accents, they would came to me, and they go, so in the US, do you guys have COVID? And I was like, oh, <laughs> we don't, but you say it's so cute. I loved hearing them talk about Corona. But there's a problem. I know this isn't a great British accent, but whatever. You got to do what you got to do, right? You do the best you can. I have a temptation. Whenever I'm talking to someone with an accent, there's a little thing in the back of my brain. I don't know why it does this. This little thing in the back of my brain goes, do it. And I'm like, what? And it's like, talk like they do. Do an impression of them right in front of their face. And you're like, no, why would I do that? But it's just so tempting because it's like, it looked so fun the way you said it. I want to try it out on my mouth. I was walking into a store one time. This was back when we used to walk into stores. And the greeter guy goes to me and he goes, hello. So Parrot Boy goes, hello. And he goes, fantastic, where are you from? And I was like, Seattle. And he's like, you don't talk like you're from Seattle. And I was like, no, I don't. And then he went, what? And I was like, what? Like, I didn't know what to do. I was panicking. I was just mimicking because it was so fun. Eventually, I had to go, I'm sorry. I don't know why I was doing that. I talk like this. Uh, to be fair, you started first. You're the weird one. I don't know what's your deal. It's just so tempting. Here's my secret tip on if you want to sound like you're from a different country, just use different words. This is not, this is somebody, my friends who are from Australia taught me this. And they said, if you want to sound Australian, don't move your mouth. Just keep it nice and flat. Don't even enunciate any of your words. Sometimes you want to replace words, right? So you're looking at the stars at night, how they sparkle but you're also retiling your bathroom, which is done with spackle. Just use that word. So be like, look at the stars, see how they spackle? There you go, you're Australian, fantastic. That's my little tip. Just fake it out, let's we'll see. I don't know if it works, maybe try it on your Aussie friends, do it on a Zoom call, see if they think you're from Australia. But let's get on with honoring you fantastic graduates. Be sure to check out some of the beautifully crafted diploma frames and graduation announcements and much, much more from our partner, Jostens. Jostens would like to give away two of these frames to some of our lucky graduates. So reply in the comments section down below during this video with the month you graduated for a chance to be chosen. I think it's so fun that you guys are graduating tomorrow uh, from your home living room. So I, I would recommend bringing your cap with you. You can throw it as many times as you want. You can throw that Jostens cap up on the ceiling 20 times. Who cares? Because you're at home. You don't even have to be wearing pants. You could just be like, I graduated and going crazy. Turn off your ceiling fan. You don't want to break that, uh, you know, because maybe you're going to use that hat for pictures later or something like that. But our winner, ooh, I think I have it. Oh, we have two, okay. Yeah, that's right. Allison Gilman and Cody Couch, who both graduated in May. Congratulations, Allison and, what was the, and Cody, yeah, thank you. Allison, Cody, we want you to email alumni at wgu.edu with your mailing address and we will get that prize sent to you. So, for all of our nursing graduates, we also have a special congratulations from our Nursing Honor Society. Reply in the comments with the hospital that you work at for a chance to win this t-shirt. Hi, I'm Dr. Carol Lisk. And I'm Dr. Janine Barron. As nurse leaders in the College of Health Professions and in our chapter of the Nursing Honor Society, we would like to congratulate all of our WGU graduates. You've accomplished so much during this very challenging time. We would especially like to recognize our nurse graduates and first responders for your courageous service to your communities while also accomplishing your academic dreams. As president and president-elect, of our chapter of the Sigma Honor Society, we would like to invite you to join us. We see this as an opportunity to recognize and honor your accomplishments. We've prepared a small video with more information. 
And if you have any questions after viewing that video, please reach out to us via the chapter email. Absolutely. And again, we honor all of you and extend our heartfelt congratulations. If you want an easy job, you don't become a nurse. Nursing is one of the world's most rewarding professions, but it's also a challenging one. Throughout your career, you'll encounter difficulties you expected and difficulties you didn't. And you'll rise to each challenge using your own innate strength, along with the resourcefulness and creativity you've developed along your journey. You've already used these tools to surmount obstacles and achieve excellence. That's the strength you'll continue drawing on and building on as you confront new challenges. But you won't do it alone. Every nurse leader knows that the support of your peers is essential and invaluable. Together is how we improve health for people all over the world. Through a network of nurses who share your level of commitment and achievement, real relationships with people facing your same challenges, and the continued education you need to make informed decisions and share your discoveries throughout a rich and successful career. Sigma is there for you. All right, Tammy Kowski, the Medical Senator of Trinity, you are our winner. So be sure to email alumni at wgu.edu to get that prize mailed out to you. Now we have time for one more on-stage game. So please welcome back to the stage, Jeff, April, Natalie, and Bo. We are going to be doing a little game called, uh, what did we call this one? Cookie, cookie face. Uh, and, uh, and we did, of course, we're going to do it COVID style because uh, we're, we're trying to wear the masks. These guys have been awesome. The crew back here, they're all wearing their masks the whole time and off stage, everybody's been wearing the masks. For the cheese ball game, that, you can blame me. I was like, don't wear your masks. And then we were like, oh, wait, maybe we should have had your masks on. Sorry. Uh, I didn't go to WGU, so clearly not as clever uh, as uh, some of you folks at home. Anyway, so this game, the way this works, cookie goes on your forehead. And uh, the person who can move the cookie from their forehead to their mouth uh, the, the fastest wins. So we're going to have you guys in the comments, of course, vote for who you think will win. Is it, I got to go on this this way. There we go. Is it Bo? Is it April? Is it Jeff? Or is it Natalie? Who do you think is going to win? We will start when the music starts with cookie forehead game. OK, go for it. All right, so we have Natalie is actually very ridiculously good at this game because we have practiced and she is, oh, but the cookie has fallen at the last moment. And over here, it looks like Bo is already chomping down a mouthful of cookie. April, how did it go? April says, you know, it was great. I had a good time. Free cookie, that's all I'm saying. Uh, well done. Bo like kind of rocked that, but uh, still going for it. Jeff and Natalie, they said, uh, no, we're good. So well done, you guys. Awesome job on Cookies COVID. I'm going to give you this one because uh, I'm not, I, I dropped it. And so I'm, yeah, you could, five second roll. Uh, does that still work during pandemics? Probably not. But anyways, Bo, congratulations. Well done on the cookie face situation. I hear a little buzz in here. Does that mean that's my thing? Oh, it does. Lisa Judd, congratulations, Lisa. Email alumni at wgu.edu with your mailing address, and we will be like Amazon Prime, just dropping it off straight to your house. So congratulations, guys. I hope that you guys all are able to keep in touch with each other. I think that's really cool how this community of almost, no, it is more than 200,000 WGU alumni. What a fantastic group. Uh, I guess that's, you just stay in touch on Facebook or something like that. That's kind of the weird thing. When I went to college, uh, Facebook, this is going to age me, Facebook really was just coming into its own. It was still MySpace which I wasn't ready for my space because I was like, I don't know, is it creepy? Maybe, I don't know, I don't know. The internet was foreign to me, so I was not trusting, I didn't jump in. 
and it took me a while to get used to social media because it's weird. You do stuff on there that you don't do in your regular life, right? In your regular life, you don't catch yourself wandering into strangers' houses, pulling down their photo albums, looking through every picture they own just in a stranger's house, just looking through their stuff. They'd be like, what are you doing here? Don't worry, I'm a friend of a friend. No problem, no problem. Just gonna look on through. What? You're a creep. Why do you do it? But I do it every time I'm online. I'm just like, where am I at? I'm in somebody's vacation in Mexico. Why am I doing this? This is creepy. Stop. I, probably the biggest mistake I made on social media was visiting an ex-girlfriend's Facebook page. Oh, that is so electronically lonely, right? It's, all, it's like the virtual version of driving past your ex-girlfriend's house. Do you remember when you were a creep and you were 16 years old? You were heartbroken. You didn't know what to do. You just drive by slowly. Like, what a, I miss her so much. Oh, there she is. <laughs> you speed away, right? Because you're embarrassed. She's like, Steve, was that you outside my house? It was. It was. You caught me. <laughs> I was just passing through the cul-de-sac. Uh, I was on my way. And um, uh, so I did this electronically, right? I typed this girl's name in the search bar, press return, only to realize that is not the search bar, and her name is now my status update. Just her name emblazoned across the internet from me. What does that say? Just says, Steve is a creep. Steve is a creep who, and I wasn't like internet savvy. I didn't know what I was doing. It just had to sit there. I didn't know how to delete it. All my friends are liking it and commenting on it. And I'm sweating. I'm like, stop it. It's trending. Guys, stop. I couldn't stop it. And they didn't stop it either. I didn't know what to do. She was like, Steve, what's going on here? I was like, nothing, nothing. I was hacked. My account was hacked. It's that weird virus that types in your ex-girlfriend's name. It's very scary. It's worse than COVID. You don't want it. Uh, it's, it's, it's horrible. I don't know what to do. It's just so easy to make stupid mistakes uh, using technology, right? You ever send a text message to the wrong person? Yeah, that's not a good one, right? I had three roommates. One of them smelled bad. That's just the ratio. I typed, dude, the house smells so bad, you could tell Joel was just here. Send to Joel. And Joel's like, uh, sorry, dude. I was like, uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding, Joel. My account was hacked. You remember, we dated. Like, I didn't know what to say. I just felt so awkward. It's hard. It's difficult to, to know what to do in uh, our world that's going so fast with social media. I don't know. Most of it, I think, is to take pictures of our food and our dogs. And I, I'm totally cool with that because I love seeing food and I love seeing dogs. I'm a dog lover. I just, I don't know what it is about animals that makes me look like, yeah. I just like, they're like, do you want to see my dog? I was like, I absolutely want to see your dog and talk in a weird voice at it. Come here, you stupid, what is going on? Why did you talk like that? I don't know. I don't know what dogs speak. I do know that dogs do like to give kisses, however, which I always thought that was weird because I see people with their dogs and they get so close. They get so close with the dog and the dog's licking their face and they're licking it. And that you could see both of the mouths, they're open. They're open. And then you're like, there's no way that tongue didn't get in there. And you're like, whoa, what are they doing? Why are you trying to, probably don't tongue kiss your dog. There's probably a line. That's where I draw the line. I try to know, you know, we have a relationship, but it's not that far of a relationship. I want to just keep it civil between me and my dog, just very civil. I don't know. There's been some things about the pandemic that have been difficult. Like, I mean, obviously, when they told us to stay six feet away from everybody, at first, some of you introverts might have thought, yes, this is fantastic. And I admit, I thought it was fantastic. I do remember being a little judgmental because they were like, stay six feet away from everybody. And I was like, yeah, and 10 feet from that guy. He was a close talker. There's no way he knows what six feet looks like, right? Uh, but uh, I admit that as time went on, I have to say I was looking forward to having some human contact. Like, I was just like, come on, just right here. Just touch my elbow. Just touch it. Just make me feel like a human again. I didn't, I missed people. So when my state where I'm at, it went to orange level. They said, you can go out, you can get a haircut, despite the fact that I still haven't. I went and got a massage because I wanted to relax. I had tension, I had anxiety, and they said that that would help. Here's the thing about massages, right? You have to be ready for them. Like, I got to admit that I was not a fan of massages. My initial introduction to a massage was just that creepy guy at the office who comes up behind you and doesn't ask. 
and just starts rubbing your shoulders. And he's always like, whoa, you're tense, buddy. And you're like, ah, I guess I get that way when strangers touch me without asking. Thanks. Stay six feet away. You know, I just, I did not like massages. The other, the other thing is I didn't know, like, the terminology. Like, I didn't know what to call the person giving me a massage. I thought they were called a masseuse, which is a fun word. It has U's and S's, just like Dr. Seuss encourages us to do. But they don't want to be called masseuse. They want to be called massage therapists, right? They've went to school, and they're therapists now. So I guess you can tell them your problems. But I didn't know that. You know, I wanted to call him a masseuse. Because inevitably, right, we heard from the nursing school, they said, this is Dr. So-and-so. Almost every career now, they all become doctors. Everybody's doctors. And that means, if they were still called masseuses, that they eventually would, of course, be called Dr. Masseuse. And that would be fantastic, right? You could go visit Dr. Masseuse, and Dr. Masseuse would be like, would you, could you get up on this table? And they'd be like, try it, try it, if you are able. Relaxation for you is key, but first, please, undress for me. And they just say that so casually, don't they? When you get a massage, they're like, just undress. And you're like, uh, what, what do you mean? That's not a, I don't. They leave the room, and you're left with those rules or whatever to, to get ready for your massage, and you undress. And then you get in your own head about it. You're like, did I go too far? Should I have, I put my socks back on. I was like, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't know what to do. I put my belt on. I'm like, I'm ready. Here, let's get a massage. Like, I didn't know what to do. It was so much pressure. And they come back in the room, and they're like, oh, what are you doing? You're supposed to lie in between the sheets on the table. Do not wait on top of the sheets. You got to wait in between the sheets. That's a good thing to do. And you're supposed to lay face down in a little toilet lid thing. It looks like a toilet lid for a gnome. That's where your face goes, just in the little gnome toilet lid thing. And then they're going to give you the massage. And they're going to tell you something before they start. They're going to say, hey, what pressure level do you like? And you go, uh, 15 PSI? I, I don't know. I didn't know what to say for a massage. I was panicked. I was like, medium. Touch me medium, please. It's how I like salsa. Maybe it's how I like massages. I had no idea what to say. And they start touching me medium. And I found myself immediately saying, mild. Touch me mild. <laughs> you guys have a very spicy medium here on your touch. I was not ready for that. It was a little more firm than I, I mean, honestly, if I'm honest, I just found myself going a little milder, a little milder, like a ketchup. Do you get what I'm talking about on the Scoville scale? I just need it so mild, just barely even touching me. Just be gentle, you know, like, like two PSI. I don't know. I was panicked. And to be honest, the other problem is I'm ticklish. And I feel like there's an age limit for when you can admit that you're ticklish. You feel like you're stupid, and you're like, that tickles. And you're like in your 30s. They're like, what are you talking about? So I just fought it, just gripping the table, biting into the toilet lid thing. They're like, are you OK? I yelled out, quit touching me. She's like, what? And I go, I can't handle it. I'm sweating. I don't like it. She goes, what do you want me to do? I was like, just rub all around my body. Could you just rub my aura? Just rub my aura while you and me listen to any together, just going, who can say where the logo, na da 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 da. That's Enya, as far as I know. She has two songs. That one, don't know the words, and sail away, sail away, sail away. That's all I know, at least. There's uh, my, my brother, during the pandemic, him and his wife, they had a baby, baby girl, beautiful little girl named Claire. And uh, she, when they were getting ready to give birth to Claire, they said, we want to make a playlist to listen to while we're giving birth. And I had no idea. I was like, what kind of music do you listen to? Is it Enya? Is it soft music? Is it like, sail away, sail away, have a baby? Or is it pump up music? Because let's be honest, having a baby, you guys know, uh, nursing students, if you've ever done l and yeah, that's a workout, right? Is it your workout remix? You know, where it's just like, hush, little baby, don't say a word. Never mind that noise you heard. Like, what do you know? Uh, maybe not Metallica for when you're giving birth. And I realized something. I was like, you know what, guys? You don't need a playlist when you're giving birth. You need a DJ, right? Wouldn't that be fantastic? You go into the birthing suite, and there's DJ Dula just like, bam, 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 bam. who's ready to have a baby today? right? Get you all pumped up and ready. They're like, I want to hear you breathing. Here we go. Your turn, Lamaz. Right? It'd just be fantastic. They're going, oh my gosh, we got another contraction. I want to hear you scream. 
I think there's so many moments for DJ Tula to be a real thing, right? It's like those EDM songs where you don't know when the bass is going to drop. You don't know when the baby's going to be born. So it's just building. It's just that. Here we go, baby, in three, two, one. Not yet. Oh, okay. Baby, 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 oh, baby, 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 no. We're building, we're building. This is going to be it. Baby's going to drop in three, two, one. Doc, what's wrong? Baby's like, ah, uh, the baby, it's facing the wrong way. No problem, DJ Dula's got you covered. Turn around. Every now and then you try to go feet first, but it's a head first situation, so turn around, bright eyes. Baby would turn around because it knows that song, right? We're all born with that. Baby turns around, they'd be like, yeah, this was a fantastic birth. Let's play some salt and pepper. Baby, 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 baby. You'd have DJ Dula, you'd have Dr. Dre there. It'd be a fantastic job. I'm just saying, I don't know what you graduates are doing, but I think that's maybe something that's going to happen in 2021. So uh, just a job idea. So as we begin to wrap up here, I have a few people wanting to give just a quick hello. And so here's some of your WGU mentors. You guys already mentioned that that was one of your favorite parts of WGU. They commend you. We commend you. And we are excited to celebrate with you guys tomorrow. Congratulations, man. This is a big day for you guys, and you did it. You did it. You're here, graduating tomorrow morning. So thank you for letting me be a part of WGU's commencement weekend. We can't wait to see you guys tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time to celebrate your accomplishments and see each of you in the spotlight. I'm going to love that part. See at each of you doing your dancing, graduating. This is going to be rad. So reply. In the comments, as you remember, I said I had one more giveaway. So it, reply in the comments with what you're most excited about tomorrow for a chance to win the final prize of the night, a $100 gift card to the WGU store. While we wait for these answers to come in, I want to welcome Natalie from Alumni Relations to the stage. And to you guys, I want to say a, fun, a final congratulations to all of you hardworking night owls out there. You guys are an inspiration and are an awesome example of dedication and perseverance. Thank you so much, Steve. Hey. And we definitely want to give you a special thank you for being our host and comedian tonight. Thank you. Thanks I know for we were me. all cracking up over here, even Good. though you couldn't hear the audience like a typical comedian show, <laughs> but you were fantastic. And I think everyone loved you as well, based on the comments. Um, well, thanks. That's awesome. You guys are so nice. <laughs> thanks. And I may be a little biased, but I'm pretty sure that you put Kevin Bacon and oh, no. David Spade and Mark Wahlberg to shame. That, well, we couldn't afford them, so we got me. So what are you going to do, right? We're nonprofit, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, but I also want to thank all of you alumni for joining us tonight and being part of this special event. Um, I am so honored to be representing nearly 200,000 WG alumni. And I want to say that again. We are almost at 200,000 graduates. That is a huge Night Owl family, and we could not be more proud to have you here. And we're so excited to welcome our new graduates to the Alumni Network. Um, and we can't wait to celebrate tomorrow on your special day. But before we go, I know that there's a lot of you waiting for this final giveaway, which was a $100 gift code to the WGU store. So Steve, work the magic in your ear. It's coming, it's coming to me, and it is... Oh, that makes my heart so happy. Excited to be the first in her family to graduate. Congratulations to Christina Harpin. Congratulations, Christina, first graduate and your family, as well as the winner of a $100 WGU gift card. Christina, email alumni at wgu.edu with your mailing address, and we'll get that sent out to you. Thank you guys again for having me here tonight. Congratulations, Night Owls. You guys are awesome. Have a great night.